Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. This is Mark Lavar at BlenderPassion.com and I will be showing you how to create this modern desk. We'll start off with a bit of basic modeling with a subsurf modifier and then we'll go on to create the basic materials for our desk and finally we'll set up a simple backdrop and add in a bit of lighting to finish off the scene. Well, let's get started. So I'm just going to quickly turn on screencast keys and start display now we can go and add in the reference image you can just download this image directly off of blenderpassion.com it will be available in the description below and here's our image just a nice little modern desk so now I'll select the other things, delete them, and go to Cycles Render. Now I'm going to save it in my tutorial folder here. We can tab into edit mode, and we're going to move this cube over a bit on the x-axis then we're going to add a mirror modifier and you can see we have two little cubes here so these will be the legs of the table and I'll just scale them down a bit and a bit more well, that's looking kinda decent So now I will add the background image. This is not an orthographic image, so don't use it like that, but it will give you some good proportion and perspective of the object we're trying to create here. Now let's see, I'll just try to position these table legs to something that looks somewhat realistic and proportional. Hmm, that looks pretty decent. So now I'll just put this right up on the grid floor here. Now we can duplicate it. Oh, actually there's a better way. I'm just going to select the Y axis on the mirror modifier. And if I just move it on the y-axis we will notice another set of legs appearing. I'll add a cube and this will be for the support beams that go across the table legs. And position it to something that looks pretty close to the reference image. and move that in and we're going to embed this face into the table leg so we don't see it anymore now if we take this face oh wait whoops turn on clipping and then we can move that over and then you'll see it just connects right there very efficient since we only have one table leg to work with then if we duplicate that just position it Bring it down a bit. So now I will select that and Shift D, move it up a bit. And it'll be this part right here.
And we're just going to scale it around a bit just to make sure it looks good. So now we'll just move everything down a bit more. Now I can add in a loop cut here, move it up to the top here, and make a sort of cube at the top. And then we're going to select this face, and, oops, Press E to extrude it, and make sure clipping is on. And we're going to make that piece now. Small horizontal piece right there. So if I add another cube in, whoops, and turn off clipping, and move it out a bit, scale it down, and there's also a back piece here, so we can still keep using the mirror modifier. And we probably want it about as large as our piece down here. Let's see, not exactly sure where it should go on this mesh. It's kind of hard to tell from this one reference image, but I'll do my best and do a little guess here. So, somewhere around there looks pretty good. And our green glass piece is going to be resting on top of this, so we do want that piece to be up a little higher and larger as well. And to make things look even, we're going to move these faces out. Well, looks a little too thick. So now if we select that, and move everything over a bit, just to get something that looks nice. So if we'll select our cube here, and scale it down a bit more, move it over. Right about there looks pretty good. We'll select that face. Turn on clipping, and we'll just move it over there to the z-axis. And move it over a bit. So everything's looking pretty nice. I'll add a subsurf modifier to it. And everything looks a bit weird, but we'll fix that. With a few loop cuts here. The more loop cuts you add, the more geometry you add, but it will give you sharper edges. You can also select an edge and press Shift E, and that will give you a mean crease. However, for mesh deformation, I find that standard edge loops work best, and also you can't export your mean creases. So that's another reason why I like using loop cuts instead. So now I'm just going to keep adding them in until I can see that all the edges look nice and sharp. And it looks like this needs another edge loop. Oh, right here looks good. And you see we have this rounded off corner here. I'll just fix that. So now we are getting a few artifacts where the mirror modifier is. 
So for now, I'll just, well, maybe add some edge loops right to the middle there. We'll fix all those artifacts after we apply the mirror modifier. Now we'll go on to the next support beam. Now we'll bring an edge loop up and an edge loop down. Now the final support beam. Lots of tedious work, but it is well worth it. Using subsurf modifiers gives us all that extra geometry and just gives us a nice smooth bevel on the edges. So I'd say it's looking pretty good now. Getting that nice smooth look on the edges. Now we're going to work on this glass object here on the top. So I'll add in another cube, move it up, scale it down a bit, and position it. Something around there looks nice. Now if we go into vertex mode, scale it up on the Y, and scale it up on the X axis. And a bit more on the y-axis. Now, I'll just fix that right there. It just looks kind of weird. Okay, for now I guess it's good. So now I'll go back to the tabletop. And if we add a subsurf modifier, go into edit mode, shade it smooth, and now we can start adding in our loop cuts. And a few more on the side. Actually, I don't want them that close to the edge. I'll move them back a bit so we get a smoother look. And then I'll add two edge loops here, just for that emphasized bevel. Now I'll scale it up a bit. And it's looking pretty good so far. Looks like I'll have to move it down slightly though just so we're sure that it rests right on top of those support beams. And I will, I will add a cylinder. And if you press F6, you can go to the properties, and I'll bump that up to 40. Shade smooth, scale it down a bit. And it'll be this piece right there. So if we rotate that, 90 degrees, scale it down a bit more, 
and we're going to position it somewhere halfway between the bottom and the first support beam looks pretty good Now if we go into edit mode, scale it out on the X, and a bit more, so now we're going to do these odd cross pieces here. And if you zoom in you can see that it starts flattening out along the ends, as well as somewhere in the middle where it intersects with the other cross piece. And same on the other side as well. So we're going to add another cylinder. And we'll bump down the vertices to somewhere around, let's see, uh, maybe 32? Oh, uh, let's just go for 16. It's going to be pretty small, so we're not going to notice that. Now we're going to select the top face here, press z the period key on the numpad to zoom in, and we'll scale it all down on the y-axis. So if we select that, we can then extrude it up a bit, and then we'll scale that down more on the y-axis, a bit more. And we can extrude that again, and we'll scale that up on the x-axis. And keep extruding until we have a nice, fine end. So I'll scale it in a bit more. Or maybe not. I'll deselect the end part and I'll scale this part in. And I'll scale that in a bit more as well. So now we can take the whole thing and rotate it, and start to position it. And if we press Alt Space, we'll change the orientation to normal. And it seems our normal is off a bit, and that's because we rotated it in edit mode. So I'll just undo that, go into object mode, and rotate it now. Move it over a bit. Let's see. Something like that should be good. And there we go. Although it should be rotated just a bit more to get the intersection point up a bit. Somewhere around, well, maybe a bit more rotation. So now obviously we need to make this end point a little, more, a little more prominent. And with a bit of manual work, we'll be able to make this work. 
So I'll move that over a bit. And move that butt up. And take the last piece there and move that up. And that should give us a good result. So now we need to work on the intersection point here. Well first I'll turn on proportional editing. And if we, well, it might not work as I thought it would. For some reason the proportional editing is affecting too much. So I'll turn that off. And if we scale that up a bit, we'll also have to change this part right here. Just scale that edge loop up a bit on the Y axis. Now you can see it much better. So now we are going to work on the intersection point. We're going to move that back a bit. We want it to intersect right at the Z axis. And we'll extrude it out a bit. And scale it down on the X axis. And up on the Y, extrude that part out. and keep extruding. So now we'll select that piece, bring it out a bit, now we'll select the end piece here, we're going to extrude that out, and we'll scale it down a bit, and we'll try to scale it on the X to round it off. Hmm. And make sure you only scale on the normal axis, not the global axis. So now I'm just going to quickly check the scale of this to see if it corresponds with the one up there, and it doesn't, so I will just scale this up a bit more. Select that, scale that up, or, I don't know, I'll just leave it like that. We can select that part, round it off a bit more, and we will extrude it down all the way to about round here, I suppose. We'll extrude that, and we'll scale it down on the x-axis. And we're just going to do the same thing we already did twice. Just keep extruding it down, just make it look nice. So we'll select the whole end here, and we'll just move it down. So it's looking pretty good. I'll just position it right over here. Make sure everything's lined up correctly. Now I am just going to select the end edge loop here, and maybe the second one. I'm going to turn on proportional editing. Zoom in on this, go back to global, and we're just going to move that down just to give it a nice curve right there. So 
So now we'll select these pieces, go back to normal, and we're just going to turn off proportional editing and select these and we're just going to move it over and keep moving it over something that looks pretty decent so now we will select those cursor to selected and then origin to 3D cursor. And that'll just give us a nice origin right at the intersection point. We're going to duplicate that. Tab into edit mode, we're going to scale along the X, negative one. And we'll go back to global, go to edit mode, control N, and then we're going to slide that right over. Actually, we're going to slide it over in edit mode. So our origin stays right where it is. Right about there looks nice. So now we can select our middle piece here. And control numpad plus will select the near edge loops. And we'll move it along the Y a bit and do the same to the other cross piece and you'll see we get a nice solid intersection right here So we're pretty much done with most of the modeling. There's just a few more things we need to add. We're going to go to the Preferences and the Add-ons tab. We're going to search for the Bolt Factory. And we're just going to enable that add-on by clicking that checkbox. And now we're going to work on those little screws that you see here. There might be one there, I'm not sure. I know there's a one here. And there's probably one up there as well. And let's see if we zoom in down in the corner here. We'll see a little bolt right there. And on the other side too. So now with that add-on, we, if we press Shift A, you'll notice this bolt. And if we press F6, we can open up the properties or you can access them by pressing T on for and look at them on the toolbar here. We have a couple nuts and we have a couple bolts. And a few presets here. We will change the bolt type to a Phillips and increase the bolt diameter. Let's see. There's a cap, a dome, I'm just trying to find if anything looks nice. But it looks like I'll go back to the hex. So we'll scale that down a bit. And we'll rotate it down on the x-axis. Then we're just going to screw that right into the intersection. So now we're going to add another bolt. We're going to change this to a nut. Scale it down a bit. And we're going to just screw this right onto our bolt here. Move it up a bit. And that looks pretty good. So 
So I'm just going to select it and then duplicate it, move it over a bit on the x-axis, and whoops. I did cut out part of the video because I did make a slight mistake, so just so you don't have to go through all that trouble. I increased the size of the bolt here, and now I'm just going to, well, insert them into the table now. I duplicated it and rotated it 180 degrees, and we're just going to insert it in there. And that should look, that looks pretty good. So you can see that we still have these artifacts right where the original mesh meets the mirrored mesh. So you should save a new file before you apply any modifiers, which is exactly what we're going to do. So I'll just save it right here. And that should do it. So now we're going to apply our mirror modifier. And we can just go in and optimize the mesh. So it seems we can't select the entire loop cut here for some reason. Let's see if I can delete the edge loop. I guess not. We're getting some weird topology here. So I'm just going to remove the doubles. And we removed quite a few vertices. But we still can't select the entire edge loop here. Or delete the entire edge loop. Okay, let's try dissolving it. And apparently we can't dissolve it either. But we can delete the edge loops here, so we'll go ahead and do that right now. And then go on to the other side and do the same thing. Ah, I see the problem now. We have a face inside of a couple faces. So we'll delete that face, select it, and delete the vertices there. Now we can select the edge loop and we can delete it. And we'll do the same for the rest. Delete that face there. Oops, delete the face. And now we'll go to face select mode and delete the rest. Select the edge loop and delete that. There might have been an easier way to do this or a way to uh, avoid this problem. However, it's not a bad thing to get into a bit of tedious work. Now we'll delete that edge loop there. And that side looks pretty good. Now we'll delete those vertices, and then the edge loop. Select those faces, and delete them. And then select the edge loop, and delete that. And on to the next one. Select the faces, and delete them. And then the edge loop. And delete that. And the last one. Delete the faces, select the edge loop, and delete that. So we have optimized our mesh. It's looking pretty snazzy. All 
Okay, now the reason why I didn't put any bolts in these areas is because, well, no one sees them, and we already have a very high poly count. If I tab in here, you can note, you can see the poly count right up there. These bolts are using up quite a bit of our poly count. So I'll select that. We're going to start with the materials now. I'll name this metal. And now if I select everything and deselect the glass, make sure everything is selected, we can hit Control L and select materials, and that will just link them all to the active object. So now I'll just change the viewport color to make sure that we do have all of the metal objects linked together. I'll change that back to white. Select the glass, add a new material, call it glass, and we'll bring up the node editor here. Now we're just going to add a glass shader. And hook it up. We'll give it a nice green color. And that should be it for our glass material. Now we'll select our metal. And we're going to add a mix shader. And a glossy shader. And duplicate it. You could probably do this with one glossy shader, but I find that two gives me a bit more control. So the way these roughness values work is it's pretty much self-explanatory. If you have zero roughness, it's pretty much a mirror-like reflection on a very smooth surface. However, the higher it goes, the more it distorts the reflection. And the way this FAC value works is that when it's set to zero, it will correspond more towards the top node input, and while it's at one, it will be more like the bottom node input. And so now that we have our material set up, I'm going to add a plane and we'll be using this as our mesh light source. So I'm just going to angle this, move it over a bit, and angle it downwards a bit. So we're going to give it a new material, and we're going to name it light. Now we're going to add an emission shader, and hook it up, Give it a slight bluish color for a bit of an outdoor feel. And bump up the strength to something that fits your scene. So now I'll add another plane, and this will be used as our backdrop. Tab into edit mode, wireframe, select that edge, and we're just going to extrude it up like this so just to give us a very slight gradient effect. We're going to add a subsurf modifier, add a few edge loops in here. Now we're going to shade it smooth. And let's see, we're going to scale it along the x-axis and then rotate it around on the z-axis. Now we're going to add a camera in we're going to position our viewport. Well, actually, first, we're going to set this to wire so we don't see our mesh light in the way. And if we hit Control alt numpad 0 we will position our camera to our viewport. So now we'll just select it, bring it back a bit. Something about there looks pretty decent. We'll rotate that along the x-axis. Now we're going to change the ray visibility of our mesh light. Uncheck camera. You might want to uncheck others as well. We're going to go to the world settings. We're going to change the color to environment texture. And we're going to open up an HDR map. You can just download some of these for free right off of Google. 
I think I'll leave the strength to 1 and give that a quick render. So now it looks quite nice actually. So I'm going to set this to GPU Compute and 100% compression. I find that 2 and 2 for clamp direct and indirect work quite nice. However, the more you clamp down on these fireflies, the less noise you will get, but it will be less accurate as well. But I'm just going to go for a really quick render here. And there we are, at 10 samples. So if this has helped you in any way, please subscribe. You can download the finished project files directly off of BlenderPassion.com. And thank you for watching.